Hello, hello, hello. This is another video by M Art. This one I am going down Nostalgia Lane and doing a ballpoint pen drawing that is in the style of what I would doodle in high school on just my random papers or notes or things like that. I'll just take the same notes or piece of paper with me from classroom to classroom and just do or elaborate on these ballpoint pen drawings with random abstract things. Um, I did a lot of like vampire mouths, um, disembodied eyes, and disembodied body parts, and just kind of worked on a lot of textures with the ballpoint pen. Uh, because I had so much time, it was wonderful, excellent for practicing shading, textures, and trying to get the ballpoint pen to look um, like pencil shading. There is a really amazing ballpoint pen artists that can make ballpoint pen look like um, a photograph and I would totally like look up ballpoint pen drawings on Google and you can most definitely see his um, the giveaway is that he does them in blue ballpoint pens so that you know for sure that he actually did it in ballpoint pen um, another thing that I did a lot in high school was just take my hand and learn how to draw hands and actually that helped immensely um, when I was learning how to draw hands. Uh, I recently was drawing a hand at work because the computer had to restart for some um, asinine IT update and uh, my <laughs> boss was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought that was a um, fax of your hand. <laughs> like, nope, just waiting for IT to give me my computer back. <laughs> so, uh, I don't do too poorly at hands, although probably I take longer than I should. But if you do long studies of body parts like hands, um, supposedly it'll help you, both help you improve in your realism of it, but also supposedly it, it might make you faster at drawing those things in the future. So even though it takes me forever now, maybe one day I'll be quick and accurate and perceptive in my drawing of hands. Who knows? <laughs> One thing that you'll find with like all artists too is even when they're drawing other people's faces, they kind of draw their own faces. When you look at like um, King Henry VIII's portraits, Anne of Cleves, um, and all of his other wives, he had the same guy paint all of those and they all kind of had the same look to them. And I was like, why did they think this guy was so realistic? It all, it's just kind of ugly looking. <laughs> and supposedly uh, King Henry VIII chose a German princess based off of one of these portraits thinking she was prettier than the others. And then when she got to court, he was like, oh my God, I can't do it with this woman. <laughs> and so, no matter what you're drawing, even if you're a realistic portrait painter, it seems that artists kind of tend to draw themselves, which, if my experience is any indicator of why that is, it's probably because we have our own faces to draw the most and practice the most with, and so that's where we learn our basics in order to draw other people's faces. So who knows, maybe that's why all artists kind of have the one style, it's because they're drawing their own face <laughs> in everything that they draw. Now here you can see that I'm working on the textures. The stippling is amazing. It's literally perfect for shading, especially with ballpoint pen, really anything. Look up George Surratt, that's S-E-U-R-A-T. He's an impressionist painter and was the first one to really I don't know, popularized the stippling technique. He called it pointillism, and um, he basically said it was like his way of messing with colors and proving that it's more the impression that you get from the painting than it is the actual like copying or mimicking of life that is the visual arts um, that is what you see in a painting. And he's kind of right. Um, when you mix several small dots together, you can like say you mix blue and yellow, you're gonna get green. Um, 
and if you mix them closer together you're gonna get a darker shade or a more intense shade and if you mix them further apart you get a lighter shade so for ballpoint pen since it's all one shade it's amazing for um, portraying different values and tones well different values um, because you have so much more control over it whereas you can see with my shading especially with these balls that are in the background between the fingers the ballpoint pen it takes a lot of time and patience to use lines to shade you can totally make it photorealistic but it just takes way too much time and patience um, i would suggest using a newer pen so that it flows better because if you use an older stickier pen like i did with this um, both the black and the blue pens were older cheaper and stickier um, it's so much harder to shade with the lines because they kind of just like gloop ink onto the paper and so it's really hard to control the flow of the pen. Um, you just end up, I don't know, either completely coloring in the circle like I did with one of those or just dealing with the imperfect shading like I did with all of these. And I mean even if it gloops it you can kind of like still keep the outside edges darker and the inside edges lighter it's just rough <laughs> it's not super easy and it doesn't look super photorealistic even though you can do that with ballpoint pen it just takes so much time and patience fair warning if you're going to do ballpoint pen keep a tissue on hand for gloopy bits off your pens and use newer pens um apparently it didn't record the mouth when i was shading that in but you can see from here how I wasn't very patient with this drawing I think it took me a total of like four hours to do the whole thing um, whereas like in high school it would take me days and days and days and days and days and I would have my jeans instead of a piece of tissue to get the globs off my pen as I drew um, and so I would do a much better job with the photorealism and the shading and the blending in my lines and not having it be not having it be so obvious that I was using pen to shade. I was much more patient about blending it all in. Same with this nose. I first use a photo reference to outline it and then I shaded it in without the photo reference. That was a huge mistake. If you are going to start with the photo reference, I would totally suggest following through with the photo reference because then it just doesn't even look like the thing you originally drew. I guess it still looks like a nose, but um, definitely not near as quality as it could have been otherwise. Um, these pursed lips, I did the same thing. I used a photo reference to outline it and then I just shaded it in without the photo reference but I think the lips turned out better. It was an old lady and um, even though I have like the lines drawn out outlining the shadows, the ballpoint pen, just like a pencil, I didn't need to erase anything. Um, it, I just drew over um, the shaded parts and blended them in with my lines instead of having to erase anything. And um, in the final finished product, you can't even really tell that I outlined it. So really when you're doing your drawings and you're outlining and then you're shading, you don't really need to erase, just keep going. You will be fine. Shade and blend, shade and blend with your pen or your pencil. And definitely take a lot more time and have a lot more patience than I did in this video. Um, this one turns out okay. I'm very well versed and practiced in shading with ballpoint pen, but the biggest factor, once again, time and patience. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this stylistic video. Please like and subscribe.